Milnit Pandey, Pro Vice Chancellor, and the Sri Rahul Karat, Executive President, Professor Tapan, and Vice Chancellor, Dr. R. M. Setnis, and uh, Registrar, Dr. Prasant and I. Dev, and particularly to the extreme, extreme participant and academicia and community of knowledge creators, and particularly my dear graduating students. At the outset, I would like to congratulate all those receiving their degrees and medals from this university. Today marks an important day in your life and a significant milestone in your life's journey. After entering into these institutions, you pursued your academic work with great dedications. By your hard work and by dedication to maintain higher standard, you earn your degree and award. It is indeed a moment of pride for you as much as it is your teachers, parents, and all those who had contributed in shaping your life so far. An academic institution is essentially a community of students and teachers. Both should work together for the sole purpose of advancing knowledge and disseminating it. If at any stage they are distracted from this straight part of pursuing truth, there will be jeopardy to the community of the institutions. I hope that the students and teachers of this university will continue working together as a team in the pursuit of knowledge. Remember one thing, in whatever field you excel, whether in science or technology or humanity or commerce, what is responsible for that is the great spirit within you. Never ever alienated yourself from the spirit with you, within you. It is the center from which everything else manages. If you remember that center, you will never be alienated. You will be free from anxiety, even in the most challenged situations. Our freedom fighters and national leaders dedicated their lives for the nation and ensure our political freedom and gave us a constitution for good governance of our country. However, good governance could flourish in our country only if youth who are future leaders of our country ignite the flame of patriotism by sticking to truth peace and non-violence as methods of making the India of our dream. We are at a point in history where rapid changes are taking place on all fronts, technologically, economically, politically, and socially. With the first changing technology, the only mantra to keep Peace is to keep learning and relearning. We are aware of the innermostly rich heritage of our ancient education, philosophy, and system of thoughts. The pursuit of knowledge, wisdom, and truths was always considered in Indian thought and philosophy as the highest human goal. Our National Education Policy 2020 is the first education policy of the 21st century 
and seek to revive and ramp all aspects of the education structure, including its regulations and governance, to create a new system that is aligned with the aspirational goal of the 21st century education and United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development Goals, while building upon India's tradition and value system. Education policy lays particular emphasis on the development of the creative potentials of its individual. It is based on the principle that education must develop not only cognitive capacity, but also social, ethical, and emotional capacities and dispositions. It has been experienced throughout the world that a country can become prosperous only by becoming strong knowledge society. Success will not be measured in the wealth you accumulate, but on how much you contribute to the well-being of the society. Always remember that we are a social being and our happiness lies in the growth and well-being of people around us. I wish all of you to become the leaders who can lead in the right direction, alignment, and commitment to create a happy and prosperous country in which field that you go while living up to the values and ideas and reads in our constitution, which was prepared with the vision of our freedom fighters and national leaders. Education is not just about giving degree. It is about generating knowledge, minimizing the social gaps, and making good human beings with skill and expertise as enlightened citizen of the country. If we look back to our civilization, the education system in the country in ancient time was culturally and spiritually enriched and advanced. Ancient India was the land of invention and innovation, and we had Takshashila and Nalanda as the world's center learning or education. These ancient education systems were oriented towards all-round development of students, focusing on practical knowledge rather than theoretical knowledge. The National Education Policy 2020 is seen as a game changer to overhaul the country's education system by reorienting, redesigning, and relinking its process and outcome. One of the key aspects of the NEP 2020 is a holistic and multidisciplinary approach with an aim to develop quality citizen. This call for flexible and innovative curricula from higher education institutions, designing from the traditional compartmentalizations and uh, disengaging from the traditional and compartmentalized and specialized system of academic thought. A collaborative approach in education by combining different streams of learning such as science, art, and commerce is the need of the hour. Higher education institutions need to embrace a more multifaceted multi-strata, integrative, and synthesized approach. The Indian education system needs to be geared towards the holistic development of individuals to create overall well-being in society. We have a rich heritage of art, culture, languages, 
traditions, knowledge, and value systems. This need to be embarked in the curriculum at all levels. Further, for addressing the requirement of holistic education, it is also important that interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary programs are introduced. This will require restructuring and redesigning the existing programs on offer at all levels in science, social science, humanities, management, technology, etc. In the long run, this will ensure the unity and integrity of all knowledge system. In the arena of school edu skill education, NEP 2020 has met recommendation for integrating school education into higher education so that an integrated national skill qualification framework can be developed to meet the challenges of skilled workers needed for the century in the 21st century country. As we know that Digital India campaign is helping to transform the entire nation into a digitally empowered society and knowledge economy. The disruption in education during COVID-19 pandemic highlighted the urgent need to adopt education technology by institution at all level. The ICT initiative in higher education by the Ministry of School uh, Education like the National Mission on Education through ICT, Swayam online courses and Swayam Parva, DTI channels, virtual lab, National Digital Library of India, ESOT, Sindhu, Smart, etc. have been able to address the need for online access to digital content, especially journals and e-books, online services, e-governance, and accelerating hands-on digital learning ecosystem. National Education Policy 2020 has led special emphasis on the use of technology in the teaching learning process. The policy recommend existing e-learning platform such as Swayam, Diksha, etc. to be extended to provide teachers with an online teaching platform and tools, developing engaging e-content, including games, simulations, augmented reality, virtual reality, etc., and extending virtual lab by leveraging existing e-learning platform such as Disha, Swayam, and Swayam Parva. Accordingly to NEP 2020, curriculum and pedagogy will be designed by institutions and motivated faculty to ensure a stimulating and engaging learning experience for all students and continuous formative assessment will be used to further the goal of this program by continuous and comprehensive evaluations. Faculty should have the capacity and training to be able to approach students, not just a teacher, but also as mentor and guide. All programs, courses, curricula, and pedagogy across the subject, including in class, online, and in open distance learning modes, as well as student support, should aim to achieve global standard of quality. Faculty are to be empowered to conduct motivative teaching, research, and service as they see best, as that will be a key motivator and enabler for them to do truly outstanding creative works. 
the presence of outstanding and enthusiastic institutional leaders that cultivate excellence and innovation is the need of the hour. Outstanding and effective institutional leadership is extremely important for the success of an institution and of its faculty. Excellent faculty with high academic and service credit credentials as well as demonstrated leadership and management skill need to be identified early and trained through a ladder of leadership position. Institutional leaders should aim to create a culture of excellence that will motivate and incentivize outstanding and innovative teaching, research, institutional service, and community outreach from faculty members and all higher educational edu institutional leaders. Knowledge creations and research are critical in growing and sustaining a large and vibrant economy, uplifting society, and continuously inspiring a nation to achieve even greater heights. A robust ecosystem of research is perhaps more important than ever with the rapid changing changes occurring in the world today. That is, in the realm of climate change, population dynamics, and management, biotechnology, and expanding digital marketplace, and the rise of machine learning and artificial intelligence. Today, the criticality of research is more than ever before for the economic, intellectual, societal, environmental, and technological health and progress of a nation. The society challenges that India needs to address today, such as access for all its citizens to clean drinking waters and sanitation, quality education and health care, improved transportation, air quality, energy, and infrastructure required the implementation of a process and solution that not only informed by top notes, science, and technology, but are also rooted in deep understanding of the social sciences and humanities and various sociocultural and environmental dimensions of the nations. Facing and addressing these challenges will require high quality, high quality interdisciplinary research across the field and must be done in India and cannot simply be imported. Evidences from the world's best universities throughout the history shows that the best teaching and learning process at the higher education level occur in environment where there is also a strong culture of research and knowledge creations. With these few words, once again, I express my heartfelt felicitation to the graduating students being awarded degrees, their families, and wholehearted congratulations to the faculty and staff of MIT World Peace University, Pune, on this auspicious occasion to make the convocation a memorable one. Jai Hind. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Let's give a big round of applause, my friends, to Dr. Raj Kumar Ranjan Singh Ji. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Indeed, a big round of applause once again. I would like to bring to the attention of all the dignitaries on the dais. Please have a seat. Dignitaries on the dais, as well as the 
parents present here at this convocation ceremony. I would like to attract the attention of K. Kasturi Rangan, sir, and Honorable Minister Dr. Rajkumar Ranjan Singh, sir. Sir, revered Professor Dr. Vishwanath Karat, sir, always says that the union of science, religion, and philosophy alone will bring the harmony and peace to mankind. The objective of this university is very, very clear from the title itself, World Peace University. And this is the only university in the world, I would say, that which has such kind of objective. We always say that if the mind is destructive, best of the best education can be used for the bad things in the world. And hence, the vision of revered Professor Dr. Vishwanath Karat, sir, is no matter you are doing engineering, medicine, management, law, you may be doing any degree program. Few fundamental principles are important in life. And that's the reason he handcrafted an important document that is the syllabus of all the peace programs for MIT World Peace University. Every student, may it be from any degree program in this university, undertakes this, these peace pr programs mandatorily. And it is our request and vision of this university that this message should reach every part of the world, every part of our nation. And through luminaries like you, dignitaries like you, this is possible. So we would like to request you to kindly accept this syllabus. Please go through it. And through your, uh, I would say, message throughout the world, please try to spread this message and try to implement this throughout our nation. I request revered Professor Dr. Vishwanath Karat sir, Sri Rahul Karat sir, to kindly hand over the copy of the syllabus of peace programs at MIT World Peace University. The copies are being handed over to Dr. K. Kasurangan sir and Dr. Raj Kumar Ranjan Singh Ji. A big round of applause, my friends. This is the only university in the world having mandatory peace programs in every degree program. Thank you, thank you very much. My friends, of course, we are moving towards the end of this convocation ceremony. But let me request all of you to remain seated unless the ceremony is formally declared closed. And let me quickly share with you that we are going to have three most memorable photographs of your life. First photograph will be taken in this very pen doll itself with all of you together. Second photograph will be taken on the staircase in front of the dome with, of all the students with the dignitaries. And third photograph will be taken, same on the stairs, of all the parents with the dignitaries. So please cooperate. It is going to be, we would need your help and cooperation to execute all these three photographs. They are very beautiful photographs. You will cherish them for a lifetime. So I request all of you to kindly extend your support. I would now like to request, I think before I invite uh, Dr. Ganesh Poklesar, we have a few more instructions. Friends, as informed, we would definitely gather for the group photographs as well as a couple of instructions that we need to follow. So please pay attention before we proceed with the official vote of thanks. So kindly remember, after the first photograph that happens at this very Sabha Manda, the academic procession will leave from the Sabha Manda followed by the student procession, which will again leave from the Sabha Mandap. After this, all the students of the graduating batches, the rank holders, the medalists, as well as the dignitaries and the delegates will gather at the stairs of the dome for the group photographs as instructed by Dr. Bapat. After which, we all will break for lunch. My dear friends, kindly note, we have a lunch break and lunch is arranged for all of you at the two venues 
for Division 1 and 3 students as well as parents, the lunch is arranged at this very Sabha Mandap towards the rear side. And for Division 2 and 4 of students and parents, the lunch is arranged at the library lobbies below the dome. So kindly follow the venues for the lunch break. You can also take help from the student volunteers who will be directing you to the venues. They are in blue shirts. After which, we will then move towards the second part of the ceremony, which is the degree distribution ceremony, for which, kindly note, the reporting time is 2.15 p.m. sharp. I repeat, the reporting time is 2.15 p.m. sharp for the degree distribution ceremony. Division 1 and 3 will gather at the Sabhamanda. Division 2 and 4 will gather at the World Peace Dome. And finally, before leaving, do not forget to collect the convocation souvenir from the collection center, which is besides the registration desk. I hope the instructions are clear. My dear friends, kindly follow the instructions for the smooth functioning of this very convocation ceremony. I now kindly request Professor Ganesh Pokhre, the controller of examinations, MIT World Peace University, Pune Bharat, to kindly propose the vote of thanks. Sir, over to you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's a great honor to stand here and present the vote of thanks to this uh, grand and energyful uh, convocation. So, to proceed with the convocation uh, vote of thanks, I am extremely thankful to our chief guest, Dr. Rajkumar Ranjan Singh Ji, Honorable Minister of State for Education and External Affairs, Government of India. Sir, thank you for being here with us and your enlightened words. Uh, we surely carry the message of learning and relearning, which you mentioned when you are talking. And I am sure all the graduates are taking this message forward. I am also thankful to our chief guest of honor, Padma Vibhushan, and a great scientist, Dr. K. Kasturangan, sir. Sir, we are really grateful to have you here. And the concept of excellence you shared with us and our students, we are sure that we really have those path follows when we and the students take the journey forward. Thank you for being with us. All those functions with this energy and this thing will not happen without the blessings of our revered founder, Dr. Vishwanath Karat, sir. Sir, thank you for your time and being here with your blessings. When we think of this convocation or any function, we really look for a motivation and I really thankful to our Honorable Executive President Rahul Sir for the motivation and energy he always pumps into the organization and taking these grand events happening so smoothly. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being the source of energy and motivation to all of us always. Thank you to Chitney, sir, our respected Vice Chancellor, sir. Uh, the formal arrangement and all the guidance we receive made us to sell smooth. Thank you, sir. I am also thankful to all my colleagues, Pro Vice Chancellors, Registrar, Teens, HOS and faculties for their extreme support without which this gathering would have not been possible. I am thankful to Governing Board, Board of Management. And obviously when we look at this size arrangements, I am thankful to the event management team, Dr. Mahesh Thorve and team for making every step so possible and whole of the organizing members, members of media, IT team and also the members of exam team, officers. Last but not the least, I am thankful to the press and media present here and we are going to soon, these things being live casted at good number of places and will be covered into the digital and print media tomorrow. To end up this, the great thanks to the parents who showed trust in us few years back by admitting their wards, son, daughters here and allowing us to be a part of their academic journey and part of the success. Thank you very much parents for your faith in us and thank you very much students for giving us an opportunity to host you at this grand convocation ceremony. With this, I formally conclude the vote of thanks and I prefer with all of my colleagues on dais to remain in the thankfulness to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. 
May I kindly request all the students to please wait because we are yet to declare the closing of the ceremony officially. Before that, may I kindly request all the dignitaries on the dais as well as the students, parents and guardians to please rise for the national anthem. I request everyone to please rise in their seats. Let us maintain the dignity and decorum of this gathering. And let me once again appeal to all the students and their parents that before we leave this campus for the day, please do not forget to collect your convocation kit, which has a sapling of Tulsi, which has the preamble of the Constitution, which will keep reminding you that we have to work towards strengthening the democratic fabric of this nation. We will have the Bhagavad Gita, which will only stand as the way we should live our life beyond religions. So this is a very, very unique activity, one, yet another activity that is done at World Peace University. Let me once again remind you, after the national anthem is over, we will keep standing as we are without a single moment till the time dignitaries reach downstairs for the first photograph of the convocation ceremony. May I now request the technical team to kindly relay national anthem. भारत माता की भारत माता की भारत माता की थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच आई होल्ड ऑन होल्ड ऑन आई रिक्वेस्ट रिवेट प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर विश्वनाथ कराट सर टू काइंडली अनाउंस दैट द कॉन्वोकेशन सेरेमनी इज क्लोज्ड आई रिक्वेस्ट एवरीवन इन द ऑडियंस स्टूडेंट्स एंड पेरेंट्स गेस्ट टीचर्स एवरीवन टू कीप स्टैंडिंग फॉर नेक्स्ट वन मिनट फ्रेंड्स I declare the fourth convocation ceremony closed. A big round of applause, my friends. Let us keep standing. I request all the dignitaries to kindly come in the front. And now we all are going to join hands of the students, those who are on our left and right hand side. Let us join hands with all of them and let us bond and get united. भारत माता की वन दे वन दे वन दे सच अ ब्यूटिफुल ब्यूटिफुल पिक्चर आई रिक्वेस्ट एवरी वन टू प्लीज लिसन टू मी केयरफुली नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू हैव टू इंपॉर्टेंट फोटोग्राफ्स फर्स्ट फोटोग्राफ ऑन द स्टेयर्स with all the students okay and after this photograph students will quickly vacate the stairs and all the parents 
we will have the photograph of all the dignitaries with the parents. I request all the students to reach the staircases from the left hand, right hand side of the.